hier im Klassenzimmer im Abbey Road Institut in London. Also hier auf 5 Abbey Road, nebenan ist gleich 3 Abbey Road, das hat das, das gehört hier zu Abbey Road Studios, dieses Gebäude. Das ist jetzt der Klassenraum, so ähnlich wie wir jetzt in Berlin und in Frankfurt auch haben werden. Also wir haben ein klein bisschen mehr Platz, deswegen können die Tische ein klein wenig größer sein, aber das Equipment Setup ist das gleiche. Also wir haben 27 Zoll iMac, wir haben das Apollo Interface, wir haben einen Controller, eh auch den Nectar Controller. Ähm, ja, jede Menge Plugins, die Software auf den Rechnern ist drauf, Protos, Logic, Live und halt jede Menge ähm, Plugins, alles was so interessant ist. Ähm, ja, und da steht der Student den ganzen Tag zur Verfügung. Jeder von diesen Tischen äh, steht einem Kursteilnehmer zur Verfügung, die ganze Zeit. Ähm, also man muss jetzt nicht irgendwie wechseln oder sowas, sondern ähm, alle Kursteilnehmer haben eben ihren Arbeitsplatz, auf dem sie arbeiten können. Und wenn sie jetzt mal nicht mit den Kopfhörern arbeiten äh, wollen, dann können sie auch in die Production Suites gehen. Auch das gibt es hier schon. Kann ich euch mal kurz zeigen. Also. Also, eigentlich fast das gleiche Setup, einfach in dem Fall Speaker, auch wir in, in Deutschland werden ähm, die PMCs hier herinnen haben. Ähm, das Interface ist Apollo, allerdings halt hier jetzt noch zusätzlich mit dem ULE 2 ähm, und einer größeren Tastatur. Das heißt, man kann ganz einfach und exakt gleichem so Software und ähm, ja, Software Setup, das heißt, die Leute können ganz einfach ihre Sessions von drüben nehmen, hier neu reingespielen und ähm, funktioniert alles, muss nichts umgestellt werden. So what makes the curriculum unique is the fact that everything we teach has to be referenced back to Abbey Road Studios. So instead of just arbitrarily setting topic after topic after topic and sometimes when it comes to sound engineering and music production things can exchange places very easily. Uh, as an example, if you're teaching sound theory, you're teaching decibels and you're teaching electronics Some people might think that it makes sense to put electronics before decibels or sound theory before decibels because all our teaching has to do with the history of the studios. When we start teaching, we're talking about pre-1930s technology. We're talking about recording to tinfoil, recording to wax. Uh, we talk about uh, the electronic recording revolution in the 20s, how the microphone changes everything that people finally could uh, sing with a new style, what, what we call crooning now. And eventually you could have low frequency instruments that you couldn't record onto, onto disc before, uh, if you're just recording acoustically because it was too much energy. And of course, as we start working, following the, the history of, of production, when we get to, to the practical uh, work that we do, every, every lecture has a practical exercise that goes with it. In the beginning we're working in mono and we're just doing level balancing uh, because the, 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 that's where the history of music production starts. Level balancing in the sense of number one, placing the musicians around the microphone in such a way that the balance between them would be even, but then at a second stage where you have your different microphones in the room and you have to balance the microphones and get a, a, a good even sound from the, from the ensemble. So the students will start working in mono, they will start working with level balancing And as we progress with the history, we let them start using EQ. But again, because we're following the, the, the history not only at Abbey Road, but uh, outside uh, in other studios, the first EQ that the students are going to work with is purely passive. So if you want to increase the, the amount of high frequency on your program, what you're going to do is that you're going to cut the low frequencies and then boost the whole program up. Going back to the presence box that uh, we still have here in the, in the curve bender, Uh, which were passive devices, which you had attenuation by simply going through the device and then you had to, to apply gain to it. Um, and that's going to uh, work across uh, everything we do. I mean, we're only going to teach compressors when compressors come into the, into, into the picture. When, when historically the first compressors are introduced, then in our teaching we're going to talk about compression. But of course, before using compressors, we're going to try to get the students to understand that you can actually use level control by just reaching for the fader and, and only in cases where just fader writing is, is not sufficient you would really reach for a compressor when the attack time is, is, is faster than what you could deal with or you, you're constantly changing the game. Um, so I think that this is primarily what makes the, the curriculum of the institutes, uh, it's the same curriculum in London and in, in Germany and in France and in Australia. This is what makes the, the curriculum different from the other schools, is that uh, the history of Abbey Road is so rich that we're talking about 
I, th I know a lot of people are going to associate uh, what happens here with the Beatles, and that's fine. The Beatles were enormous in the history of Abbey Road, but we're talking about Elgar, we're talking about Bicham, we're talking about Karajan, we're talking about artists like Maria Callas, we're talking about the Pink Floyd, also if you go back to your to your pop music. It's, it's, it's just incredible. There are so many records that people have no idea that they were made here. And we just keep referencing everything we do to the records, to the technology, to the engineers, to the producers that work here.